A sight which to people from all over the world means simply London in summer. The travel posters have come to life. They are changing the guard at Buckingham Palace. The Queen is in residence, and for the Queen's guard, this is a daily routine in the forecourt of the palace. While along the Mall, the St. James's Palace detachment arrives with corps of drums at Ambassador's Court. Part of this palace is still a royal residence, and ambassadors are still accredited to the court of St. James. The Queen's colour of the guard is lodged here with honour daily in the officer's guard room. While half a mile away, belying the clock in Horse Guards Tower, time stands still. The Queen's lifeguard is mounted every day where once there was another royal palace at Whitehall. And every hour, on the hour of every day, every half hour in severe winter weather, sentries are posted and the relieved sentries and their mounts retire to shelter from the elements and from the cameras. But for the two regiments of household cavalry and the Queen's five regiments of foot guards, this is no ordinary day. The famous clock tower of a fourth royal palace, the Palace of Westminster, tells us it is almost time on this, the Queen's official birthday, for the most important military parade of the year, held at Horse Guards Parade. The Queen's birthday parade of the Household Division, Trooping the Colour. Facing west, William Kent's fine 1750 facade of the Horse Guards building. Headquarters of London District and the Household Division, whose flag flies above. And on the vast arena of the parade ground, with the Admiralty Building to the north, eight guards are already in position. On the extreme right of the parade and on the southwest corner of the square are the escort for the colour of the 2nd Battalion Grenadier Guards, which will be trooped this morning in a ceremony known to the regiments of foot guards for over two centuries. The ceremony will be watched by Her Majesty the Queen from the saluting base to the east of the parade ground in front of Horse Guard Arch. More than three centuries ago, the Tudor and the Stuart kings and queens watched royal displays of skill and courage in the tilt yard of the palace, not a lance's thrust from here. This is one of central London's largest open spaces. And to the west, one of London's favorite shady and quiet retreats on hot summer days, St. James's Park, 93 acres. Once marshland, then drained to become a royal deer forest, later a royal garden. An ornamental lake is hidden by the trees. It runs almost the whole length of the park and gives refuge to a great variety of birds and birds from civil service offices too. North American pelicans sun themselves on its backs. All the wildlife sleeping off the effects of last night's splendid fireworks display, which was watched by Her Majesty the Queen from Buckingham Palace, where the first two divisions of the Sovereign's escort, found by the Blues and Royals, are drawn up. As through the archway from the quadrangle into the forecourt comes Her Majesty the Queen. She's accompanied by three royal princes, all colonels of foot guard regiments. And she herself, as the crowds will shortly see for the first time, is dressed in the uniform as Colonel-in-Chief of the Grenadier Guards. She first attended this parade 31 years ago as their colonel. She wears their white plume, the star and ribbon of the Order of the Garter, and six medals, the Imperial Order of the Crown of India, the Defence Medal, the War Medal, 3945, King George V Jubilee Medal, King George VI Coronation Medal, and the Canadian Forces Decoration. And today she will ride not in a golden coach as she did 25 years ago, but side saddle along the mall. first two divisions of the Sovereign's Escort in Queen's Gardens. And the Sovereign's Escort moves off round the Queen Victoria Memorial towards the Mall.
at the other end of the mall in a barouche from the Royal Mews, in fine weather it's been described as the most delightful of all carriages, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, with Princess Margaret, arrives and is greeted by a royal salute. mother in a white and green chiffon dress with hat to match, Princess Margaret in rose pink. In the second barouche, her lady-in-waiting, Mrs. Patrick Campbell Preston, and her treasurer and equerry, Sir Rafe Anstruther. The famous Venetian window of the Major General's office, from which members of the royal family, guests of Queen Elizabeth, will watch. The Major General of the Household Division, who's also General Officer Commanding London District, is Major General John Swinton, and he'll be riding on the parade today. This was the Duke of Wellington's office when he was Commander-in-Chief, and he was Colonel of two of the regiments on parade today. One of these regiments was the Grenadier Guards. Eight guards are drawn up, numbered one to eight, from right to left. On the right of the parade, the escort for the colour, and number two guard are found by the second battalion of the first or grenadier regiment of foot guards number three and four guards are found by the first battalion of the same regiment formed in 1656 as a bodyguard to charles ii in exile they wear a white plume to the left as right of the line among guards regiments a grenade is the collar badge the buttons are regular on tunic and on cuffs and the regimental badge of the Grenadier Guard is the Royal Cipher, ER, reversed and interlaced, surrounded by the garter and surmounted by the Imperial Crown. Five and six guards, making the corner of the parade, are found by the 1st Battalion Scots Guards, founded in the reign of Charles I, reformed on the restoration of the monarchy in 1660. No plume in the bearskin because they're centre of the line. The collar badge is a thistle, and the buttons on tunic and on cuffs are in threes because they are the third guards regiment and the regimental badge of the scots guards is the star of the most ancient and most noble order of the thistle seven and eight guards are found by the first battalion irish guards appearing on the birthday parade for the first time since 1974 when they trooped their color formed in 1900 by command of queen victoria in recognition of her Irish troops' outstanding bravery in South Africa. A plume of St. Patrick's blue on the bearskin. Collar badge is a white shamrock. The buttons on tunic and on cuffs are in fours. And the regimental badge of the Irish Guard is the star of the Order of St. Patrick. In front of number seven guard, the new Queen's colour of the 2nd Battalion Grenadier Guards presented at Buckingham Palace just a month ago today and decked this morning with a laurel wreath to commemorate the battle honor, Dunkirk, 1940. It is held by Sergeant John Swain, whose father and uncle were both like him, grenadiers. The right and the left escort sentries, Lance Corporals Harrison and McKinnon, are both 23 and joined the regiment when they were in their teens. To the south of the parade, in front of the trees and the garden wall of Downing Street, the massed bands, all five regiments of foot guards, three regiments on parade, and the Coldstream and Welsh guards. Also the Corps of Drums of the two Grenadier battalions on parade, and the Corps of Drums and Pipes and Drums of the Scots guards and the Irish guards. Some 375 musicians in all, under the direction of the Senior Director of Music, Guards Division, Major Dick Ridings, Coldstream guards. The drum majors in front in state clothing. In command of the parade, the field officer and brigade waiting. Foot guards appointment created by Queen Anne at her palace of Whitehall in August 1711. 
He is Colonel Greville Tufnell, Lieutenant Colonel Commanding Grenadier Guards. He's riding Zebedee, as he did in 1975 when he was Brigade Major, and as such responsible for organising this parade. Commissioned into the regiment in 1952, and by the next year he was serving in the Canal Zone, so that 25 years ago he listened to the coronation on radio while on patrol. Royal procession moves along the Mall towards Horse Guards Parade. The two divisions of the Sovereign's Escort, found by the Blues and Royals, Her Majesty the Queen riding Burmese, the horse which she's ridden every year since 1969, given to her by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Colonel of the Grenadier Guards, is beside her as the Royal Procession moves down the approach road to Horse Guards Parade itself. The Queen riding along behind seven and eight guards to the north of the parade. Burmese, 16 years old, immaculate in the state saddlery of the Grenadier Guards. The Duke of Edinburgh, the Prince of Wales, the Duke of Kent, on the grey horse as her majesty rides along in front of the horse guards building and under the window from which she is watched by queen elizabeth the queen mother she looks up and salutes queen elizabeth turns her horse to face the parade she is greeted by the first royal salute of the morning at exactly 11 o'clock. The Brigade Major, Lieutenant Colonel George West, Grenadier Guards, responsible for coordinating this complicated parade, rides with four troopers at the head of the procession, which now moves across the parade ground. His father was killed while serving with the same regiment. The mass bands play Speed Your Journey. begin the inspection of the line. Prince of Wales with the white, green and white feather plume of the Welsh Guards of which he's colonel. They are serving in Berlin. Major David Webb Carter MC, Irish Guards, has taken part four times in this parade and he's with me this morning. Now beginning is the first of five parts of the ceremony of Trooping the Colour which is an inspection of the guards and the sovereign's escort by Her Majesty. This is followed by the troop, which is a colourful display of marching and music by the mass bands. 
and third did the escort move forward and across the parade ground to collect the colour, which they then troop or parade through the remaining troops on parade. The fourth part is a march past in slow and in quick time by the eight guards, and the fifth and final part is a walk and trot past by the household cavalry. As the Queen passes the guards, she perhaps catches the eye of one or two of the soldiers standing there, but they, of course, cannot follow her. She now passes number seven guard of the Irish guards and passes behind the colour, which she salutes. Queen reaches the end of number eight guard. She passes the adjutant, Major Oliver Lindsay of the Grand Air Guards, mounted on the bay gelding, march past. Behind, the princes of the blood, and followed by the master of the horse, and gold stick in waiting, Lord Mountbatten. And at the back, in the cocked hat, Major General John Swinton, the Major General commanding the Household Division and in overall command of all the troops on parade today. The Queen now moves past the Household Cavalry and past the standard of the Blues and Royals, which bears the Royal Coat of Arms and the principal battle honours of the regiment. March is Chimes of Victory. The Duke of Edinburgh, Colonel of the Grenadier Guards, the regiment whose colour is to be trooped this morning, rides with the other royal princes behind Her Majesty the Queen back to the saluting base at Horse Guards Arch. A new Master of the Horse riding this morning, the 15th Earl of Westmoreland. You master the horse for the first time in 42 years, the Duke of Beaufort, usually seen at this Queen's birthday parade. They're watched about by members of the royal family, Queen Elizabeth. The oldest member of the royal family watching is Princess Alice, who's 95, the youngest Lord Nicholas Windsor, the youngest child of the Duke of Kent, who's eight in July. And now, when the Queen and her accompanying officers have resumed their position at the saluting base, the second part of the parade begins, the troop, a musical display in slow and quick time by the mass bands. The senior drum major, household division, is drum major Wigan, Coldstream Guards, and the slow march is the Huguenots.
the drummer's call is the signal for the officers of the escort to take post. The captain moves to the right of number two guard, and the command of the escort, as is the tradition, is now taken over by the subaltern. Lieutenant Jamie Bruce, age 25, grenadier for some seven years. Seen service already in Hong Kong, Borneo, and Belize. Behind him, the ensign with the white colour belt. As the escort move to the front of the parade ground, they carry out a left fork, which is a manoeuvre to change direction, but not the formation. Some people say the origins of this manoeuvre lie in the practice of moving troops on the battlefield during the 18th century. the traditional quick march of the right flank company. As the band move to the rear of the parade ground to make way for the escort, Lieutenant Bruce is searching for a mark on the parade ground which will tell him exactly where to halt the escort at the appropriate distance from the colour. At this point, the Regimental Sergeant Major, RSM David Webster, who is the senior soldier on parade, moves to the front of the escort to collect the colour and hand it to the ensign. Been with the Grenadiers for 22 years, much of it with the Guards Parachute Company, where he's completed 140 jumps. He will be commissioned next Monday. He will halt in front of Sergeant Swain, salute and take the colour before handing it on to the ensign. As soon as the ensign has received the colour, he'll turn about, show it to the escort, and they will present arms. The NCOs on the flanks will turn out to symbolise the protection afforded to the colour. Big moment for Second Lieutenant Anthony Fain, commissioned from Durham University two years ago. The ensign, Sergeant Swain, and his two sentries now take their places for the escort, which from now on, that the colour is with it, will be called the escort to the colour.
the escort step off to a march called Escort to the Colour, arranged from the Grenadier Waltz by Major Dick Rydens, the Senior Director of Music. At this stage, the mass bands carry out a movement called the Spin Wheel. Again, changing direction but not formation is the most difficult manoeuvre. It's not written down in any manual, but the way it is done is handed down from generation to generation, musician to musician. The two parts of the mass bands end facing in opposite directions, and the one half turns about on a sign with the white gloves of the senior director of music. escort approaches the left of number eight guard the music will cut out so the field officer can call the troops on parade to the present and pay the compliment to the color In 1700, as the army gradually became organized as regular force, battalion colors replaced the old company flags around which leaders rallied their men in battle. It became the practice to carry the colors down the ranks at the end of a day's march, to escort them with due honor to the billet in which they were to be lodged for the night. Lodging the color differed little from today's ceremony. The color is trooped, honored, acknowledged, recognized by all ranks. And it was in 1805 that Trooping the Colour first marked the Sovereign's birthday. In 1707, a new colour cost £30. Now a new Queen's colour, like this, costs almost £4,000. It is richly decorated with crown, royal cipher, and flaming grenade and battle honours as befits the symbol of the regiment's tradition and history. Remember that the captain of the escort, Major Sam Coeridge, did not accompany the escort, but remained with number two guard. As the escort reaches him, he picks up his place on the right of the escort in order to reassume command. In the meantime, the subaltern, Lieutenant Bruce, marks time in order to revert to his original position on the left of the escort. The ensign remains in the centre. The slow march past begins. This is the slow march of the Grenadier Guards. Scipio by hand.
five and six guards. March past to the slow march of the Scots guards. Garb of old Gaul. slow march is the traditional air let Erin remember. Grenadier Guards, quick march, British Grenadiers. The quick march of Scots Guards, Elon Lally. quick time is completed by the Irish Guards to their quick march St. Patrick's Day. The massed mounted bands of the lifeguards and blues and royals led on the parade by Captain Brian Keeling, director of music, blues and royals, and with Cicero drum horse of the lifeguards on the right and Hercules of the blues and royals on the left, Move into the centre of the arena to play for the walk and the trot past of the household cavalry. The standard of the Blues and Royals presented here on Horse Guards on the 30th of May, 1973. Carried by Squadron Corporal Major Sellers. The officers' horses of the Blues and Royals with the beards or throat plumes of the royals, the royal dragoons, 
whom the Royal Horse Guard, the Blues, were amalgamated in 1969. The Lifeguards. With their unmistakable scarlet tunics and white plumes. of the escort, Major Richard Wilkinson, leads the household cavalry to the east side of the break ground. And the foot guards present arms to honor the household cavalry as they walk past. The regimental slow march of the Blues and Royals. March the lifeguards. of the Blues Royals and the Lifeguards. Both wear dark tunics. The farrier of the Lifeguards, a black plume. The trumpeter, who alone rides on a white horse so that he can be seen easily on the battlefield, sounds the signal for the trot. Cavalry passing beneath the flags of Commonwealth nations flying on this Commonwealth Day. The field officer of the escort, Major Wilkinson, signals with his sword. And the Blues and Royals wheel round to trot past before the Colonel in Chief, Her Majesty the Queen. the most splendid sight of the parade. The sun glinting on the breastplate, the white cartouche belt, the flash cords. And the tune, of course, the keel row.
horses immaculately groomed. And perhaps reacting rather to the heat on this parade ground. The temperature this afternoon is estimated to go into the 80s. At 12 noon, the birthday greetings of the household division to Her Majesty the Queen. sight of such splendid pageantry, one might forget the other skills which are held by the soldiers on parade. And amongst them today are clerks, barbers, photographers, carpenters, drivers, tanks and land rovers, gunners, radio operators and even helicopter pilots. And all these skills must be maintained at the same time as the standards required for parade. And if one thinks back to last Christmas time, over more than a half of the troops on parade today were involved in the firefighting activities in the Greater London area. The Queen rides towards the Mall at the head of her guards. And these finest of troops, which visitors to Britain, and indeed we ourselves, delight to see performing their ceremonial duties and providing a backdrop to the pageantry for, pageantry for which this country through the centuries has become famous, have today taken part in something which is more to men of the household division than a complicated annual ritual. It's a way of expressing, in visible terms of personal care and excellence, their pride in the privileged position which they claim as household troops, and their commitment to the sometimes unfashionable ideal of service. At the beginning of her reign, shortly after her coronation, the young queen expressed her resolve not just to rule, but to serve in the tradition of her father and her family. The men of the household division, on this her official birthday, have made her aware once again that she's surrounded and even now followed down the mall by men who inherit traditions of service that together span almost 18 centuries of human history.